Hey, this is Joshua DC. Today we're at our Philomath, Oregon project at Patrick Lumber, and we want to show you a few things to make this project special. Patrick Lumber, they've been around for over 100 years, and it deals with high-end timber products. We just did our topping ceremony, which is a Scandinavian tradition, um, kind of ode to the tree. Um, so we set it a little sapling on top of the building, kind of give back to the, to the wood that built this building. And they're going to use this as like flexible office space, host some light events, uh, you know, work with Oregon State uh, School of Forestry. The whole thing overlooks their sawmill. And then even better than that, it overlooks the forest. And uh, they're really proud that, you know, they can stand in this building and they have kind of every level of forestry displayed where they got some old growth, some new growth, some reprod coming up. And it kind of just shows the diversity in Oregon and what we can do with all the wood coming out of here. And uh, when we're kind of talking about the project and working through the details, they really want to make this thing special. So they supplied us and kiln dried custom and, and surface for us a bunch of 12 by 12 timbers and oversized timbers. So we wanted to highlight some of the connections and some of the special things we did to really make these timbers stand out. So we've talked a little bit about the scale of the building and uh, here's, here's a good example. This is a six by six, very standard in our construction as far as timbers. I mean, we've had six by sixes carrying roofs that are 30 feet tall as well and similar size structures. And this is a 12 by 12 that we framed almost this entire building out of. So you really get the feel for the scale of this building when you start looking at this thing that looks like a toothpick that's pretty common in, in a lot of construction and uh, what we built this structure out of, which is a 12 by 12. Um, still number one, S4S, KD, FOHC, all the good stuff, but uh, just very oversized. So this room is a great display of all our standard connections that you'll see on a timber frame structure from us. Um, we really want to highlight these and point these out because we feel like um, there's some advantages to doing this. If you want to build a timber frame and you don't want to see the hardware and you don't want to see the metal mixed into it, um, the timber frame connections are the way to go. There's hardware embedded in some of these connections to get our lateral bracing and make sure that you know our shear and that our buildings are, are engineered. Every building that we design is engineered to your site specifically. So behind me you got scarf joints, we got some OG profiles that are sticking out on ridge beams, we got dovetails that are carrying jack rafters and shed rafters, and you know we got a lot of seat cuts that are carrying you know your uh, your standard rafters to walls. And uh, what you see behind us is really a good display of what we can deliver on a timber frame structure and we really feel like you know the timber frame is a timeless look that's never gonna go out of style. So what you'll see when we're all said and done is pegs and wood. So one of the cool features about this building is it really gives you a feel for all three post base connections that we offer through DC Structures. Uh, the one we're sitting by here is our horse friendly knife plate. Although this isn't a horse barn, we use that terminology throughout our process. It's something that we've been real proud of developing over the last couple years. And it's really set up so we can elevate that post um, in the construction process, not have to pour finished slabs. You got flexibility on your finished surface and how it gets graded and where it goes and you don't have to decide pre-construction. Uh, we can perfectly place rain drains and not have to worry about them being slightly off to the column reveal. And lastly, it'll, uh, it'll allow us to delay putting in finished surface during the framing and, and rough construction phases of the project. I generally like to put those in towards the end so we don't risk any site damage. So how it works is we pour our footing to a known grade down below. We know the height of the post um, and we set this in relationship to the top of floor of the building. We get that information from the DC Structures operations team as they're modeling the structure and doing all the assembly drawings for the prefabrication. Um, they're designing the, the columns, they're designing the knife plates, and then they're cross-referencing those with the structural plans. This whole setup on, on this, this shed roof is all set up for my slab to slope 2% away from the building, have zero threshold into the door for my ADA accessibility. Our finished material will come right to the bottom of this at that slope so that when we're done and we pour this slab, all you will see is this plate sticking out and it'll look like this post is just sitting on top of our finished surface.
One of the most common post connections we'd use um, for a lot of interiors and some exteriors and sometimes our deck intermediate post is just the standard knife plate. So you can see the plate down at the bottom of this. It's got a three quarter inch standoff base and it bolts in. We don't set any embeds into the concrete. All we do is uh, we lay it out, it gives us the ability to square everything up to the foundation and then we uh, tap con or hilti bolt it into the foundation with the proof fasteners per our engineering plans um, when we lay out the site. So this would be our standard knife plate. You know, this wall was poured to a known elevation. The post was prefabricated. It's prefabricated because we fabricate the bottom with the bolts that accept the knife plate. And then if you look at the top, it's all mortise and tendon in there. So everything that we do on these exterior columns uh, when it comes to timber framing uh, is known elevation. So it's really important to work with uh, the operations team at DC Structures and, and uh, kind of get dialed into your site conditions and pedestal heights or, or footing heights so that we can design this in. It comes to the site, some minor shimming, and you're ready to go. The last and final uh, post uh, column connections that we're, we're going to talk about here today. My least favorite, FYI, for all you builders, is the pedestal. Uh, it serves a purpose. On this job, we have it. It's on the deck. Um, we're raising the grade so we can do a lot with the elevation when we have this pedestal because you know we can bring the ground basically as high as we want you know within six inches of the bottom of that post um, but they're really easy to screw up uh, so your concrete guys really need to pay attention to the plans and the structural design and all the grid line centers uh, this one you know we have great reveal around the post everything fits good but they are an easy one to misread a dimension and something get off or if your foundation is not perfectly square when you're squaring up that building, sometimes these things like to walk off that grid line. Um, some of the easiest things to do is just get the building built and then lay out the pedestals and get them poured is, is generally my go-to because then the building's all kind of laid out squared up on the foundation and we can kind of just relook at everything and make sure we can make any adjustments to the pedestals need be. But this still has our standard knife plate. There's no embed. Uh, there's a rebar detail that you need to pay attention to the structural plans. Um, the knife plate still hilties or tap cons, whatever you want to call it, bolts into the top of the pedestal. Uh, this post is mortise and tendon. You see we got it set up for the deck. It actually goes up and carries our Nantucket dormer on the shed roof. So this post, you know, was cut to length and this pedestal was set to length. So again, we set, you know, a baseline from our top of finished floor to the top of the pedestal. We work closely with the DC Structures operations team in there to come up with these heights to make sure that we met the site requirements to, to clear a grade and then we were, were setting them up and building it right so when we got these posts and they were prefabricated that we could install them and not have any issues as we build this structure up because everything is finalized once it's cut through our machine and our process. So while we're down here looking at the deck framing, I want to point out that all our timbers and our beams for this deck are dug for number one S4S. You might say, why would you put dug for number one S4S timbers on a deck without being PT? Because they're going to rot. Well, we got a product that we use called ClearGuard 25. Um, it does pressure treat the wood. It absorbs better than pressure treating. If you cut the wood, it actually gets embedded in all of it. It's low VOC. It has no metals in it. It's uh, non-corrosive to fasteners. So when we start doing timber frame projects and have all these big timbers and exposed elements, we really like to try to keep the exterior aesthetics uh, in line with the building versus flipping this to a PT post. So all the framing that you see that's horizontal, vertical, that's dug for number one is treated. We did keep all our stringers for our deck um, as PT just because they're a little more hidden and concealed. And, but uh, yeah, it's a product we've been using a lot. Um, if you're doing a timber frame, if you got decks, if you want you know, some nice exposed elements, it's definitely something worth looking into. A common question we get you know, when we're doing these big timber frames or when we sell these timber frame kits to other builders is, what do we do with all this stuff on the post? You know, there's kind of some sticker marks you know, that gets a little moisture from, from the build during the process. I mean, we kind of went through the spring in Oregon. So this building's started KD timbers and it's gotten wet and then they've gotten moved around. But what we do is we sandblast everything. So uh, we'll do all our rough, rough trades. We'll get the plumbers in here, the electricians in here. We'll get the building dried in. We'll get the windows on. Um, and generally before siding and before insulation, we'll bring a sandblast crew in and we'll actually texturize all these timbers in place. And then we can roll in the finishing, we can 
you know, we can side and we can stain everything right away if our siding package isn't pre-stained or we can, you know, if we have a pre-stained siding package, I, I often bring guys in to just pre-stain the timbers before we even start siding. So that we're caulking on the stain material and that everything's finished and ready to go um, once we butt that side into it. So we've talked a lot about like the, this building and the connections in it. And what this really highlights is like the DC structures prefab and operations team process in our whole design department. I mean, this building was designed from the ground up um, for the needs of the client with the client's material. Uh, you know, we really talked through the member sizing, how we want it to look, how we want it to feel when we're in here. Um, you know, in a few weeks, we'll be able to share all the interior design renderings that our team's doing as well. Um, but DC building and DC structures is really like a one-stop shop for dirt to doorknobs, start to finish construction and design process. This building was designed, engineered, then prefabricated by our team. And in that prefabrication, you're seeing like the fruits of all our labor. Uh, we got, you know, all of the timber frame connections that are on display behind us. Um, and with that prefab, with our pre-construction that we do on these type of projects, is really why we've been able to be successful and deliver this shell of a building in the time frame we have is because we put so much work in on the front end um, to really deliver a clean finished product. So we hope this video is helpful. Uh, we can't wait to show you this project once it's all complete and wrapped up. Uh, but if you have any questions about our projects, about our process, about our timber frame structures or any of our design, engineering, prefabrication capabilities, give us a call or visit our website.